Hello and welcome to the very first of my series on pre-trib moments. In other words, these videos are going to be in support of the pre-tribulation rapture of the body of Christ. And I just want to bring up a couple points um, concerning the pre-trib rapture because it is Bible doctrine. In this first video, I want to answer the question, are modern Christians really pre-trib rapture believers? Now the post-trib crowd will have you believe that most modern churches believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. But I can tell you, as a matter of fact, that even if they confess that they are pre-trib in their doctrinal statements, they are not pre-trib in their actual belief system. So what do, you, what do you mean by that? Well, let me just show you some verses of Scripture here. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. You say, what's that have to do with the rapture? Very simple. If you are looking for Jesus Christ to come back at any time, you're going to make sure that your life is pure. You're going to purify your life. You're going to get rid of sin. Why? Because Jesus could come back at any time. It's an unknown thing when the Lord Jesus returns. Now, are the modern Christians living that way? Are the modern churches, the modern big, huge mega churches living in a any moment Jesus could come back expectation? No, they're not. They might say that they believe it, but in practice, they deny it. They are not purifying themselves. They're becoming more worldly. And it's not because of the pre-trib rapture. It's because of unscriptural compromises. All right? doesn't work. Let's look at another scripture here. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. It says here, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For we are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, or who is our life, excuse me, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Now, one of the reasons I decided to do some of these videos out here in nature is because this is the type of place where Christians have met down through the centuries. Traditionally, most Christians down since through church history, most real Bible-believing Christians have been persecuted. They didn't have buildings that they called churches. This is the kind of place where they could meet. They would meet out in the wilderness like this. Okay? You see, real Christians... You don't have to have a building to be a Christian. You don't have to come to a building to be a Christian. If you have one and it's Bible-believing, fine. But you don't need that. But what we're seeing today is we're seeing multi-million, tens of millions of dollars going into church buildings. That's ridiculous. If you truly believe that Jesus Christ could come back at any time, you wouldn't waste your money on that. Okay, you would set your affection on things above. Instead of, in, instead of spending ten million dollars on a church building, you would spend ten million dollars on missions, or on tracks, or on Bibles. Go hand them out. You'd be interested in soul winning, in evangelism, not in building huge monuments, not in building huge universities and saying that you're training young students there. Okay. They may profess to be pre-trib, but in practice they deny it. They are not pre-trib rapture believers. A pre-trib rapture believer will meet anywhere. Okay? A pre-trib rapture believer will not compromise the Word of God to go and fellowship with people, to become part of a church social group. That's not truly what pre-trib rapture believers are about. Okay? So I'm sorry, that argument does not hold up under close, close scrutiny. And if you say, well, I don't know if I agree with this, all right, 
go to Joel Osteen or Rick Warren, probably the two biggest megachurch pastors right now, and I use the term pastor very advisedly, but go to those guys and see how many sermons they're preaching on you better get ready to leave this world and Jesus Christ can come back at any second. They're not preaching that. You know what they're preaching? They're preaching world peace. Why? Because they're followers of the Antichrist. They are precursors to the Antichrist. They're preparing the churches, you know, professing churches, professing Christians for the arrival of the Antichrist. That's what they're doing. They're not pre-trib. Not at all. You know? So, having said that, let me just say this. The time is drawing very, very near. And what you need to do, if you are a pre-trib rapture believer, or even if you're not, you need to realize that Jesus Christ is coming back very soon to catch his bride away. And if you're not pre-trib and you are saved, well, you're going to go up. I don't care how much you love this world and how much you want to stick around and prove that you can defeat the Antichrist and prove that you're tough enough to live without taking the mark of the beast. If you are saved, if you are a King James Bible believing Christian, truly saved and everything, you're going up. You're going to be leaving. So don't bother building huge houses. Don't bother being all about money. Be about the Lord's work. And if you have sin in your life, purify yourself. Get that sin out of your life. That's what you need to do if you're a pre-trib rapture believer. Now if you're post-trib, hey, you better come out here to places like this and learn how to live and learn how to survive. You know, here, here's, some, uh, here's some snow. Learn how to boil this down and make it into pure water and things. You know, here's some, uh, here's some grass. Maybe you should learn what kind of grass is edible and what isn't, you know, so you can survive because you're not going to be able to buy food unless you take the mark of the beast. See? Totally different set of priorities when you are pre-trib versus post-trib. Pre-trib, I say, yeah, I can learn some things about survival and whatever, but I need to be about the work of the Lord Jesus Christ and purifying my life in preparation for seeing Jesus at any moment. If you're post-trib, well, then you've got to start thinking about how to survive. And that's the funniest thing to me, because these guys that preach a post-trib rapture, they don't really believe it in their heart. Because if they did, they'd be out in the mountains someplace, they'd be up there on top of that hill over there with a little survivalist, maybe, cabin or little maybe even a cave or something learning to live without electric storing up your food for you know some say pre-wrath so that'd be three and a half some post-trib that'd be seven years you're gonna have to endure to the end to be saved in that time period if you truly believe it what are you doing in a church with a regular house and a mortgage and a bank account and everything else what are you doing with that if you really believe that you're facing seven years of God's judgment on this earth or three and a half whatever you believe. If you really believe that, what in the world are you doing on YouTube? Why aren't you stockpiling? Why aren't you getting out, learning how to survive out here? You're going to have to. What are you doing with a job? What are you doing with a bank account? What are you doing with a driver's license? What are you doing with an internet service provider? What are you wasting your time for? Yeah. See the problem? The Bible teaches a pre-trib rapture. There's going to be a couple more of these pre-trib moments videos coming out. I'm going to come out with them as I can. Don't be deceived by post-trib rapture thieves. That's it. Thank you for watching.